as most of you probably know, I've been a friend of the Air Force for many, many years. Well, I would have flown with Lindbergh, but the only in-flight meal was a peanut butter sandwich. One reason I've been around to be a friend all these years is that I don't smoke anymore. I quit. But take a piece of friendly advice. Don't smoke if you haven't, and if you do smoke, quit. Spend a few more years with your friends. <laughs> threats that face the United States, the, the most serious, the most disastrous, is that of nuclear war. I'm Colonel Gary L. Curtin. I'm commander of the 90th Strategic Missile Wing here at Francis E. Warren Air Force Base in Wyoming. Our national policy for about 40 years has been to maintain deterrence through maintaining strong strategic forces in the United States, able, able to hold at risk the forces that may, in fact, threaten these, this United States. <laughs> our last Minuteman 3 deployment in the mid-1970s, the Soviet Union has deployed or developed five new missile systems. This includes more than 665 SS-18 and 19 missiles in silos hardened to withstand attack by our current operational ICBMs. Their latest missiles, the SSX-24 and SS-25, represent the newest technology and include mobile basing. The Soviets have also hardened critical command centers and leadership facilities. This hardening has undermined our ability to hold these facilities at risk. Strategic modernization then will improve the ability of our forces to hold these facilities at risk by deploying more and better weapon systems. Peacekeeper is the cornerstone of our strategic modernization program that began back in 1981. We believe the Peacekeeper, along with the small ICBM, and of course with the, the sea launch ballistic missiles and the improvements in our airborne leg of the triad, will be the very, very cost-effective deterrent to war. Last September, Air Force Systems Command passed responsibility for the first four Peacekeepers to the Strategic Air Command at F.E. Warren Air Force Base, the location where all missiles will be deployed. The Peacekeeper program achieved initial operational capability with 10 missiles on alert in December 1986. Final deployment of the 50 approved Peacekeeper missiles is scheduled to be completed by December 1988. I'm Captain John Hocutt. I'm a field engineer with the deployment of the Peacekeeper missile system. Today, our technicians are practicing a transfer of the reentry system from the Type 2 transporter to the emplacer. The Peacekeeper development program has proven most successful. The Peacekeeper has displayed an accuracy two to three times better than that of the Minuteman III. The reentry system has the capability of deploying up to 10 reentry vehicles to targets over 5,000 nautical miles away. The development program started in June of 1983 at Vandenberg Air Force Base when we conducted a series of eight above-ground launches. We modified three Minuteman silos, and then we demonstrated the capability of the system by conducting below-ground launches.
Peacekeeper's development has been on schedule, under cost, and most successful. However, we still have a military requirement for 50 additional missiles as part of the President's modernization program to ensure continuing effective deterrent stability. Peacekeeper is the most successful missile development program undertaken by the United States. In the 1960s, Air Force warriors flew combat in the skies over Southeast Asia. Among the some 30 different types of aircraft now flying from Tansanut Air Base are Air Force EC-121s called Big Eye. Operating at low altitude to avoid enemy radar detection, the mission of this unique, unarmed task force is to direct fighter pilots against military targets and communist MiG fighters. To do this, Big Eye crews operate some five tons of delicate electronic equipment aboard the aircraft. When their powerful radar picks up an enemy plane, operators track it, and the weapons control officer vectors our fighters in for the kill. Now under PACAF command, these aircraft and crews are a unit of the Air Defense Command's 552nd Airborne Early Warning and Control Wing. Big Eye, keeping our strike pilots posted on MiG activity and forming a vital link in the air defenses of South Vietnam. Strategic Air Command B-52s, staging from a base in the Western Pacific, have completed over one year of conventional bombing operations against the Viet Cong. Since the first attack in mid-June 1965, more than 350 missions have been flown with over 70,000 tons of bombs dropped. After each bomber lands, parachute riggers recover, inspect, and repack the huge drag chute, which is over 43 feet in diameter when deployed. This spring, the B-52s striking the Viet Cong were modified to increase their internal bomb load and a new system was introduced to speed up loading time. The bombs are now preloaded on special racks for a package uploading. Three packages fill the bomb bay and can be uploaded in less than a third of the time previously required. target an F-100F with a cameraman from the 600th photo squadron joins up to photograph the strikes. The pictures obtained are used to study bomb trajectory and evaluate target damage. of these raids is borne out by captured documents and enemy prisoners. They reveal the Viet Cong's great fear of the B-52 and its ability to strike anywhere at any time without warning. aircraft actually stands for that it's actually like a deterrent towards war. Our mission is to be ready to defend the United States under any conditions, to deploy anywhere at any time, at a split given moment, 
every one of these aircraft takes special attention in order to get it to fly, and uh, one person cannot do all the jobs that are necessary to do that. So we do have to work together as a team. We have eight different specialties that uh, participate in repairing the aircraft and getting them ready for the mission. Well, when you're out here working on these aircraft, you realize a lot of the pilots, that they're putting their lives in your hands, and uh, they trust you to do the job, and uh, you just go out there and do it. You know you have to do it. Every system has to be uh, capable of operating. You've got weapons, radar shops, and others that are necessary for uh, the plane to be fully capable for combat. Sometimes it gets a little hectic trying to get birds up. You just got to slow down and take your time, because uh, one mistake can be the pilot's last, and that's the last thing you want to do is hurry up a job that needs to take time. What we're working with here is a, a combat-oriented maintenance unit, and uh, it's pretty much everybody is working together. I've done my job, and now it's up to the pilot to do his job. My name is Staff Sergeant Randy Charlin, and I'm from the 94th AMU 1st TAC Fighter Wing. I'm Senior Master Sergeant Seville, Specialist Flight Chief. I'm Lieutenant Jeff Reardon, and I'm the Assistant Officer in Charge of the 94th Aircraft Maintenance Unit. Doing the job to the best of their ability is always in their best interest, the interest of the pilot, the interest of the wing, the interest of the country. Next month in Air Force Now. Fly high-tech combat training missions with the remarkable ACMI system. Travel to the Philippines to survey the heavens with the 17th Surveillance Squadron. All this and more in next month's Air Force Now. Remember what I told you earlier? Just because Air Force Now is over doesn't mean it's time to light up a cigarette. For me, for your family and friends, for yourself, don't smoke. Yeah.